we're going to be just doing a quick review on a recent survival kit I tried out in the, in the woods in the old scenario a lost a lost photographer and it's the Yemeni 10 in 1 survival kit which we've got here hello everyone and welcome back to UK survival my name is Pete and today okay <coughs> morning everyone so I've finished my crude little rain cover backpack collecting some snails right, I'm just getting crickets and the mushrooms and there we are a nice crispy grasshopper. Pull this inside, coming clear water. There's a fighter, there's a fighter. So, how did this fare in a little survival scenario? Right, so if you haven't seen if you haven't seen the scenario or the unboxing of it, there will be a link up up here somewhere and um, where you can actually check out those two videos or if you just want to see how this thing is actually actually like just stick around and um and i'll tell you about it now right the kit right the kit costs 15.99 from amazon i got it about a couple of years ago from a company called yemeni and um it says it has a 10 in one kit it had a general normal space blanket nothing special packing pack i can't get any smaller now and what I managed to do is build a teepee out of my tripod stand for the camera. Uh, because I was, a, I was a photographer, so I had a tripod stand. But I also built a debris shelter at the same time as well. So the, so the, the teepee was underneath it. Because the weather forecast did say it's going to be thunderstorms and, 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 and rain. It did rain all night, but it didn't rain as hard as I thought it was going to rain. I slept quite comfortably. I put a bed of um, willow underneath the bottom. And I was in there with a t-shirt nearly in, until three in the morning I was laying there and just in a t-shirt and then, then it got a little bit chilly it just put a fleece over top of me as a blanket and that kept me going right until 6 30 in the morning where I just got up and started moving around and warm myself back up again so the blanket not grumble at the blanket I really really like that right the kit's a bit of a mess now there will be some overlay exactly what was inside there but the other thing which really, really did just surprise me was the torch. It's, a, it's called a Cree Q5 torch. It takes one AA battery, has a little clip inside there. It's got a diffuser where you can go short or long. But what I did notice during the test is it had a four function system on the, so for, for a torch, which when you look at Wish, or for, for this type of torch, you can get it for like 279 plus postage and packaging. It had a four function system, so it had off, on, high, high, medium, a low beam, a uh, low power, and it also had a strobe function as well, which I am very, very impressed with, with that torch. It lasted all night and with no, no issues. It doesn't throw very far as, as a diffuser, but for what you need in a survival, just right close to it is actually quite nice. And if you put it on the strobe and just stick it up on the top of your spasher. It's metal, not it's water resistant but not waterproof. Um, the other thing which worked really really well inside this kit is actually the fire starters. These are like compressed and fuel infused paper or cardboard. Um, I've done these tests and that before. The first time I tried lighting it, it didn't light. I fluffed it up the second time and it lit fine. But I said at the start it didn't have any lighting any lighting um, sort of uh, way of doing it the kit did say it had a um it taught it taught you how to make a flint and steel it taught you how to make a flint and steel so what I put what, what I carry with me normally is a a bracelet a power cord bracelet which also has a flint and steel on it uh, and a knife because uh, that's the other thing this kit didn't actually have was a decent cutting tool it had one of these little card sleeves which i did use to cut the paracord to make the fishing rod out of the fishing hooks but the problem with the fishing hooks they're so bloody big um they're like sea fishing hooks <laughs> where um, i'm in a river most of the fish around here are like little minnows and gudgeons and or small bream and birch which they're too they're not big enough at this stage to um eat these 
you're more better off putting smaller hooks and catching small, as I say, you can catch a big fish on a small hook, but you can't catch a small fish on a big hook. So you've got, if you're getting a big hook, you can only catch big fish. If you've got a small hook, you can catch small fish and big fish. Fish, big little fish, you can take 15 little fish and make a decent meal out of it. If I can't catch one big fish, what's the point of having fishing hooks? And the line itself is only that long. So I had to think that I tried doing a natural braid with some sticking nettle cordage. Um, I couldn't get it long enough in the time, so I made this power cord. And again, it's quite hard to throw it out. So if I had longer line, I could make a hobo reel or hand line, and it'd be a lot, lot easier um, to do on there. But my bank I had was too far away from the system. Right, so fire though, I did waffle on about that. I had fire, I had a whistle. Inside the whistle had a little waterproof Little thing. And during my unboxing, I said it'd be really good to put some matches in there. So I put four Strike Anywhere matches inside inside the whistle, and I made sure the top of the whistle, the little grooves on the top of the whistle, actually were good enough to strike the match along it. The first time I tried it, I say um. I didn't fluff up the tinder, so I, I wasted that one. The second match snapped on me, the head just fell off. The third match, straight away, no issues. But I did have to put it in there, but they do give you a vessel to put to put them in. The saw, the wire saw, I used that to cut down a green limb for the fishing rod. It snagged a few times. I've had a lot better wire saws than this one. It did, it stuck within the first sort of Half a, half a centimetre coming through and a little bit of persuasion it did cut through it's more, the branch more snapped under its own weight and actually this thing actually cutting it so it's not the best wire saw I've seen the carabiner when I opened box it I said what's the point of having one of these but then it actually came to the thing I used it as the door I um, used the carabiner to hold the, t the space blanket together to actually make a door and attach it to the tripod. So it kept me nice and warm inside there. And I said the, the compass itself, it's a floating bezel, the red arrow points south. <laughs> you know, um, that's gonna confuse most people. Um, and it doesn't stay still, it just floats around all over the place. It's just, it's just really, really round. It takes ages to go on. But, but you could have a signal mirror if you need to reflect on something on there and the last thing which if I did catch a fish um, because I made um I, I bought a water bottle metal water bottle with me I made some stinging nettle and, and blackberry tea I had a set of wire bellows if I needed to restoke the fire again without lighting it I could have done it but so the kit itself it had a lot of good things going for it a reasonable price of £15. Two things let it down, really. No cutting tool. No fire making. Without those two things, it's not a survival kit. If you can't make fire, and you can't cut anything to make tools, you're back to primitive, yeah? You're back to friction fire and, and stone tools. The other thing it didn't have was any really source of water filter. Um, the water filter I used, I used my face mask because it was COVID-19. I had a face mask on me, so I used the face mask as a water filter. Used to use the plastic container to scoop the water out of the river and then poured it into my into my cistern. So three three falls really, isn't it? Water, cutting, and fire. Three of the main, uh, three of the top five things missing. It had cover. No. It didn't even have cordage. It didn't have cordage. <laughs> so five top things, and it had one a cover. So where would I rate this in my scale of five being able to survive on top of Everest or the jungle? I can't remember which one I said, jungle or Everest. Something like that, the jungle. I think the jungle, because the jungle is like the hardest environment ever, really, to survive. 
one the lowest rank in being survival in a, in a, in a bedroom I'd probably put this into the garden, category two. A fun thing to have inside your garden, as long as you've got some basic necessities with you. Yeah, so um, your house has got some sort of fire making, and your house has got some sort of water, and, and the water you can have in the house. Because that survives if you've just left with that only, and you don't have the skills, the basic skills, if you don't have the primitive skills, you're not going to survive. Will I ride this again? As a kit? No. As some of the items inside it are quite good. But I wouldn't spend the 15 99 I'd just get the items myself. I'd get the bellows and I'd get the space blanket. The fishing kit? No. Useless. The saw? Useless. The tinder? Good. But you can buy big packs of that anyway. The bellows? Good. Didn't try them out though. Hmm, that's my review. Don't buy it. Get a better kit. Ooh, it'll keep you alive. Don't put your life in this one. Put your comments down below. Like, subscribe, share. What would you do to this kit? If you had to buy this kit, what would you do differently with it? Me, I added a knife in the way of my paracord bracelet, which is a little one inch blade which is just in here and some matches and that also had a ferro rod in it at the same time as well it's got a mini ferro rod on there as well water i brought a water bottle in with me that's it for now i waffle just remember it's going to be one with the wilderness and the fight and struggle for the next video of survival the tin test